So in this segment, we're going to be doing something I haven't done for a little bit, I think. We're going to be discussing the Tories and how James Cleverly fumbled um, the leadership contest so he won't even be in the top two. And this is deeply embarrassing. What on earth is going on with the Conservative leadership contest? That's the question I'm asking tonight. We now know the final two, Kemi Badenoch and Robert Jenrick. But blimey, it has been a roller coaster getting here. James Cleverly surged, then flatlined, then really surged, and then lost votes. He was the best at kind of campaigning. Him and Tugan, ironically, were the best two at kind of talking and engaging with people. Badenoch was really bad in interviews, like generationally bad, like talking about cutting maternity pay and, you know, talking about how people had more kids before maternity pay and things like that and you're like what are you talking about and Robert Jenrick here throwing um, British soldiers under the bus and you know effectively accusing them of war crimes so the two actual sensible more sensible candidates which is a very low bar for the Tories in Tom Tug on his hat and James Not Cleverly um, sorry I'm doing nicknames here as always um, were you know essentially voted down and you know these are two in my opinion far right candidates in Jenrick and um bad a notch who are going to push the tory party more and more to the right wing because um effectively the tories have given up on um the next generation you know gen z and those kind of younger voters you know the post-millennial generation i guess and are just going to focus on um the old racist people reform voters um which is not going to get them very far to be honest robert jenrick rocketed became the hot favorite and then lost votes and then snuck into the final two now honestly these numbers do not make sense if they happened in any other political vote, the Electoral Commission would be investigating. There's obviously skullduggery going on. My best guess on what is actually going on? Well, it only makes sense if some people who backed James Cleverly voted for another candidate in this most recent round, assuming their man would make the final two, and then trying to fix an easier final contest. James Cleverly lost two votes just overnight, and you would also have thought he would have picked up possibly the bulk of support from Tom Tugan at her voters seem to be on the centrist wing of the party similar to James Clever. So apparently Grant Shapps was in charge of this operation and if he was, Jesus Christ man, why would you pick that brother? Honestly, Michael Green, Grant Shapps, the two people you do not pick to be leading anything. But I, I think, you know, because the um, the Tory pool you know, of MPs is so small and such fine margins, that's where they messed up. Now I'm told that any vote lending was absolutely not coordinated by Team Cleverly. But uncoordinated vote lending is perhaps the worst of all worlds because you don't know who's doing it, you can't see the numbers, and it is easy for it to spectacularly backfire, which it looks like may well have happened here. As one Conservative MP put it to me, this is an electorate full of snakes. And that is that is really the the way the Tory party leadership contest works. You know, it's designed to just to push two people. And um, effectively, you know, one of the things that they try and do is get rid of the favourites or the ones they don't like. And it's very easy to do that in their system. Um, just because eventually, you know, the lower voted candidates keep getting knocked out. So as long as you kind of back a candidate who you think is most likely to win, you've always got a shot of getting um, your kind of person in there. Um, you know, and this is just... I just, I'm baffled at this, honestly. Everyone in politics thinks they're very clever and they all think they're cleverer than everybody else. And what I suspect happened, as as Aggie said... This is an advisor to Cleverly's campaign, to, uh, Tom Skinner. ...is that too many people went in there trying to vote for the person who they thought would knock out the person they didn't like. There were, there were so many MPs who were anyone but Rob or anyone but Kemi, which was their main primary motivating factor, actually. And... What we saw tonight is they thought they'd go in, one vote's not going to make a difference, one vote here is not going to make a difference. And actually what it's meant is that en masse, say there was half a dozen of those in each camp. Um, it's, it's sadly, from my point of view, done for James, but good luck to Rob and Kemi. They can go off now. And um... Yeah, it sounds like some of the people voted for Jenrick. Maybe they wanted Cleverly versus Jenrick. But I think he was much better off against Badenoch, to be honest. Um, to be honest with you, because she's really bad at interviews. You know, she ducked Laura Koonsberg, um, you know, so she, she's awful, 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 awful in interviews. So this this is an almighty fumble from the from the man himself. And when we look at the, you know, the fact that they got rid of Tom Tug uh, Tugendhat as well, and you look at Cleverly here on, on 39, you would assume, based on this, that um, Tom's, uh, you know, James Cleverly would win because him and Tugendhat would be more ideologically similar. 
compared to um you know the way generic and bad notch are so you think if you're plus 10 even if you're plus 10 from here plus about 49 um so he'd still be comfortably in the lead but he's kind of he's just really messed this up his his team have just it's just it's crazy honestly i know i keep saying that but i just don't understand like the the most important thing is you get your person to win and then you go from there like trying to be too clever trying to manipulate the results and pick who your guy's going to go against it's just a bad idea unless you've got you know insane amount of numbers or you rig the contest like they did you know when rishi sunak ran for the second time saying this but um <laughs> I heard from someone inside the Boris campaign, an absolutely impeccable source, that when Boris was running for the leadership and Grant Shapps was behind the scenes being the sort of Machiavellian manipulator, that he quite liked to boast about how he was helping votes to, to be cast for different candidates to you know, ensure that it got the result that they, that they wanted. I've heard the same today. Two people who are absolutely livid inside the Cleverly campaign, they're blaming Grant Shapps again. So you know, you know who's really to blame, right? Whoever put Shaps in charge of this operation. Like Boris Johnson was always going to win that leadership contest because he is, you know, he pushed the Tory party to the right, effectively. He was the guy that pushed them into where they were because he backed Brexit. So it makes sense why Boris Johnson, he was always going to be nailed on to win that contest, especially when it was him versus Jeremy Hunt, the man who can put anyone to sleep. So I'm sure he would deny that he had any involvement in all of this, <laughs> but there is a lot of fire Friendly fire, I think, is the expression, but it's certainly not friendly from what I hear in being directed towards the former Defence Secretary by the Cleverly campaign. They're blaming him for this mess up today. Interesting. Uh, we haven't, of course, heard from Grant Shapps. Should be said, we should try and uh, reach out to him mm. to see uh, what he mm. uh, has to say about all that. Contact Michael Green is probably a better, more reliable source. Um, you know, like for the Tory party, I think this is a disaster for them. I think they've gotten two really, dis you know, unlikable candidates. I think it's a bit of a gift for the for the Labour Party. Um, I think it's bad for us rebuilding, um, and it's not just rebuild. It was bad for us rebuilding because they're both right and so far right of the party, uh, but because th both of them come with a cloud of questions. Uh, Kemi, when she was uh, business secretary, and the question marks around what happened during the post office scandal and the sacking of the chief exec the, at the time. Yeah, that's true. You know, Kemi Badnotch was in charge of, of that kind of stuff, and we saw massive problems regarding compensation because I don't think the Tories you know, wanted to give the compensation outwardly, they kept saying, oh, you know, you need to give out this conversation. You know, we need to um, deal with this because the public, um, you know, demanded something to happen, or really, because the public saw that kind of ITV, I think it was ITV's dramatization of it and, and realized how bad the situation was. But, you know, the Tories kept kind of stalling on it and she was in charge of that. Um, question marks about, you know, from 10 years ago when she got caught hacking into Harriet Harman's um, uh web um you know internet or whatever it was email her website at the time um question marks over robert when he was housing minister you know we needed so what he did was he effectively managed to get um, a person who was going to build uh, i think a load of um homes um essentially a tax uh a way to save money on his tax um that he should have paid to i think it was tower hamlet's council um, that's something we'll talk about in a different video because Laura Koonsberg did mention it to him. And I think the only reason Laura Koonsberg actually brought up tough questions is because she asked the public to kind of submit them. So, you know, the public won uh, Laura Koonsberg nil on, on that front. To have The reason we lost the last election, yeah. Robert, was because people did not feel we were serious. People felt that they could not trust us and that we needed to rebuild with both trust and seriousness. I think the thing that killed them was the trust budget and just the fact that the interest rates went up so much. If, if that didn't happen, I think they would have not necessarily won, but they would have maybe they would have had a lot more Tory MPs, that's for sure. It was that trust budget, I think that really finished them off. Um, they just couldn't recover from that. They lost the faith of the country when it comes to the economics. And I think, unfortunately, you know, on whatever the challenges may have been with James or Tom, James and Tom both were serious candidates and they were people who would have been able to build the trust the party needed to be seen as a sensible opposition for us to once again then dream... I, I'm just kind of surprised that... I think Tugan Hat would have been the best pick for them. Um, I, I think, you know, he wasn't as tainted because he wasn't a minister really for that long. Um, I think he would have been the best pick uh, but I don't know that, you know, they, they always want lunatics to run their party. So, you know, it's not a really a big surprise, is it? 
about being in government. And I just feel that with both um, Kemi and with Robert, you know, culture wars aside, which is what I've been fighting for many, many years, and I think they will take... Now, you're Kemi okay, Badnach talking about kind of superior cultures and all of this kind of stuff, and you're like, what are you talking about, then? ...take us into quite a dark place on that. I think there are big questions about who they are fundamentally as people and whether they have the right character to be i don't think that they're the right picks at all and uh, i found this this quote from ian duncan smith just really funny we're in opposition and i say to everybody we're not here to pick a ready-made prime minister we're here so he's picking bad and arch he he's that's the candidate he's endorsed for us and her to grow to become much more dominant in the political debate much more eye-catching much more but my guy yeah this isn't football you haven't just bought a 19 year old prospect from portugal you, you she's meant to lead the opposition you don't have time for her to grow like not really you know she's got to be there she has to be all over labor really on terms in terms of policy and and that kind of angle you haven't got time to wait on that front you need us to come in and make a bang really you know this is the same argument people made for starmer as well like oh you know he's he's, he's a novice or you know he's not very politically astute like i like my leaders of parties to be politically astute and actually have intelligence you know that's why they should have really gone for cleverly or tugan hat but again you know these people are idiots to be about what people say do you know what maybe they are getting it right maybe their leader seems to be in the right area you know, like this this idea of, oh, you know, she's a prospect, she's going to grow and whatever, you know, like, bro, like, I think she's like in her mid 30s or something like that. Like, she is the person she's going to be like, she's not going to pick up too much from here. She's a, a culture warrior who can't make good coherent arguments. You know, that 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 point she made around, you know, superior cultures, the point she made um, around maternity pay, just incredibly brain dead. And so if any half decent interviewer, and I'm talking C tier interviewer, um, can just box her in on certain points, she's cooked. She's she's gonna be she's gonna be the next Tim Farron. She's not gonna be able to answer basic questions. I think quite excited, really, because it means that uh, Labour probably might get back in again another five years. So hey, exciting, isn't it? Well, really excited. I, well and that's because you see these potential two well, leaders let as me what? Explain. This Thank is you. this is how I see it. Your last caller, right? Yeah, he's a reform voter, but what I like to think is that the vast majority of people in this country are not far to the right like that. And also, if we also think about it, if Kemi does get picked, which um, possibly the members might pick her, but let's have a thought about it. I, I actually I have my own feelings, and my feelings are this, right? If we think that some of these people on the right are racist, and I don't care what anybody says, I don't like to say they are, but they are. You're telling me that a typical reform voter, right, is going to look at her and go, oh, yeah, she's British, she's British, yeah. No, of course they're not. Of course they're not. Ooh, she, she's kidding herself. Yeah, I think, you know, you could, you know, some of them might say, oh, she's one of the good ones or whatever. But, you know, if you have a choice between voting for Big Nigel um, or voting for... Kemi Badnotch, you know, if you're racist, uh, if you're a Brexiter, um, if you're one of those things, you're voting for Big Nigel all day, all day. And so, you know, she's not going to be the one who's able to fight off the Reform Party. You know, if anything, if you want someone to combat the Reform Party, you need Jenrick. That's the person you should have gone for. Maybe even Tom Tuganat, maybe. But ultimately, you know, she she's not a good pick. You know, the base don't like minorities at the end of the day. Um, we saw that with Rishi Sunak, they really hated him because he's Asian. Um, I found this um, statement from Chris Bryant quite interesting, actually. Board of Human Rights, um, uh, the fact that nothing works in this country, you know. Oh, no, it's, this clip's too long. I'll just tell you the clip. He just said, you know, when he was asked about, you know, the two candidates, he said they both seem to lead with their chins and both are made of very fine porcelain, effectively saying that, you know, they just, you know, they, they're, um, it's really hard to explain this because it's more of a boxing term, but uh, effectively, they're not very defensively sound, I guess, um, and they break pretty easily. That's the kind of point I'd make there. And so I, I do disagree. I do agree with that. I, I don't think they're very very smart um you know what she said again you know the the generic throwing the troops under the bus there not very patriotic that is not going to go down well um with kind of um certain members of the tory uh party um but also you know bad or not some of the stuff she said as well you just like did you pick the two biggest clowns at the circus and put them in charge of your party really Oh, that's what it feels like. Um, but anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Whenever they pick one, you know, I'll go with the quote, you're not a clown, you're the bit, uh, um, you're not just a clown, you're the entire circus. Um, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.